first of all, let me tell you about people, how absolutely ignorant, rude, disgusting people can be to people that are overweight. No, they don't know her story. They don't know her. This is important for people that are obese out there and people that are like me. You might be a child, you might be a sibling, a parent of someone that's obese and how it affects them because it does. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. <sighs> okay, I had no intention on doing this video right now, but I think about it a lot and I think there's people out there living with obesity or living with someone that is obese. And, you know, I wanted to do this video of, um, you know, the perspective of someone living with someone that is obese and how that feels. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos about beauty, paleo, fitness, lifestyle. A lot of things come under the umbrella of lifestyle, as does this video. So my mother was clinically obese for many, many, many years. And, you know, I think obesity comes with people that have gone through trauma or, you know, something usually triggers that within someone. And my mum um, was brought up in an orphanage. And if you think about the worst things that could happen to a kid, it happened to my mum. And she was in and out of foster care and she was never adopted. And then she married a abusive alcoholic who was my father. And she had two children, myself and my brother. And you gotta remember this woman had no footprint. There was no history of how to be a good mum. She left my dad, I was two, my brother was four. And uh, she hustled. She worked so hard to give us a life of love. Um, we weren't rich, we were rich with love. And, you know, mum's focus was us, just making sure we were kind, respectful human beings. We were educated, but we were, there was never talk of university in the house, that just wasn't a thing. You know, mum, I do believe, well, she was almost illiterate. I now know there's some dyslexia and everything else in there. Um, because my girls have dyslexia, but my husband is also dyslexic. But learning about this, I now see all of that in mum. And so my mum passed six years ago and she died from cancer, bowel cancer. And she spoke of these pains for a long time and the hospital never took it seriously. Why? Because she's obese. You know, it was the obesity. But I'm just gonna take you through the stages of how it feels for a young person. You know, and to be fair, mum didn't start putting on the weight until late teens. What well, she did, she had a fall and she was paralyzed for quite some time. Um, they were giving her morphine injections. I know she put on a little bit of weight then, but it was more through sort of, you know, the 17, 18. Do you know what it was? I felt like when my brother and I left home, when we'd gone, mum checked out. It was like she had nothing else to live for, meaning to care for her purpose. And I get that now as a mother, her purpose was she didn't have one, you know? And, and of course she didn't have therapy. She didn't delve into, you know, that trauma and what had happened to her as a child and as a young adult. And I think she ate her feelings and became the, you know, the jolly fat woman. And then she got bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is then into my twenties. And, you know, first of all, let me tell you about people, you know, how, I'm going to cry, but how absolutely ignorant, rude, disgusting people can be to people that are overweight. Um, I witnessed it. I'd be with my mum all the time, whether we're in a shopping centre, and you know they would, the the remarks, the the looks of disgust. You know they don't know her story. They don't know her. And she, man, she was a magnificent mother. <laughs> Again, didn't really plan on making this video. But I think this is important for people that are obese out there and people that are, 
that are like me, you know, that might, you might be a child, you might be a sibling, a parent of someone that's obese and how it affects them. Because it does, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It affects us in so many ways and it's concern, it's care, it's embarrassment. There's so much that's associated with that. So, you know, I went on and I opened up my first business and it was all around deportment, TV presenting, modeling, all of that. I did start the first uh, training courses for plus size girls, size 14, this is in Australia, size 14 and up were plus sizes. That was close to my heart because it was accepting women of a different size into the industry and uh, we got a lot of coverage for that. We started the first courses for that for women to get out and get into the modeling industry and you see a lot of it on Instagram now. But you know, mum never came to any of, I had like four graduations a year, she never came, she was embarrassed and then as her weight gained more and more, I was embarrassed. You know, I just, I, even to just get her to a seat and everything became really hard. And I think as a, as a person that lives with someone that is obese, no matter what, no matter how much you love that person, there is an element of embarrassment and being younger, you know, I, I did feel that. When we'd go out in public to places, I probably felt more anger. I wasn't embarrassed then. But if I was to introduce her on a professional level or to people that, you know, that I would be working with, there was, there was that embarrassment, not my best friends or anything like that. And then there gets to a point where you go, why won't you change? Why can't you change for me? Why can't you do that? Mum had her, she had her mouth wired. I didn't make her do that, by the way. And this was probably, I was about 17, 18. And then as she got older, she had her stomach stapled. Then she had the band on her stomach. She ate through everything, you know? It's just, you imagine what that done to the, her stomach and complications. But, you know, she was trying to do it through means of surgery and, but she couldn't do it here. And it is, you know, addiction, just like food, it's like heroin, you know, it's a disease. It's once you're addicted, it's not you. And that for me, you know, you, you reflect and you, you find out these things later in life when everything changes, when you grow up. But at that time, I was so, you know what happened? I think that the hardest point for me was I moved to England and mum couldn't travel. You know, she made it to my wedding and she actually lost, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 kilos for my wedding, which shocked me. She turned up and she was a lot, you know, slimmer, still obese, but that was wonderful. It was wonderful because she was able to share that memory with me of getting married. And then moving to London, um, she couldn't fly. And then I had children. Now in my head, I went, oh my God, having children, this is going to, mum's gonna, mum's gonna lose weight, mum's gonna, then she can get on a plane, she can come, she can be the grandmother I need her to be, and she's gonna be here for me and these kids. And uh, that never happened. You know, I'd go home, obviously, every year with the kids. And mum was really strict because that's how she was brought up in the orphanage. She was really strict with us and then she'd be really strict with my children. That didn't sit well with me because I'm like, that's not your, that's not your place. You're not involved in their life enough to be giving them, you know, don't do this, don't do that. We're here for a couple of weeks, be the fun grandma, you know, big, smother them with love, which she did, but she was always a little bit like this. And that always sort of made us go head to head. And, you know, by the third child, um, I knew there was just no hope of her coming over at all. So there's that, why, why can't she, why couldn't she have done that for me? Does she not love me enough? And of course I know now, yes, but in that time, that's how I felt. And that's a horrible feeling for a loved one. But you do take that on as, God, you're not enough you know, for them to want to change their life. I had all the tools, I had everything. When I had my business, I was able to do everything for mum to make her life better. And she chose not to. And that's, um, that's heartbreaking. But again, you know, it wasn't, you know, mum passed six years ago and it was bowel cancer, but it had spread everywhere by the time that they realized what it was. 
because it was, she was overlooked. And that pisses me off to the system. But this is again, you know, whether it's medical, whether it's beauty, whether it's these people that judge that because you're obese, you can't be sick or that pain is not real. Or, you know, it's like they're just these disgusting human beings and they're not, they're human beings, you know? Whoever, whoever you may know that you love that is obese, you know, it's, it's so hard because people judge. People make just terrible judgments, which I, which I spoke about. But, you know, my judgment was, I'm not good enough, you don't love me enough, and why, why, why can't you do this? Why can't you change? And then when mum passed, you know, everything becomes clearer. When you lose someone you love, you know, all of that, any conversations we had around weight or all that, and she was so defiant and so, she'd get so angry. Um, none of that matters. And I go, why did I even waste time with that? You know, or, or having those conversations. It was, she was happy. That was her life. And it's food and it was TV and she'd ring me with all these Whatever the TV was saying was what, what was going on in the world. And you know, and that used to irritate me as well. I'm thinking, God, if she just got out more, got out of the house and, and it got to the point where she couldn't leave the house. And then there were the falls and she would have a fall and end up in hospital and they wouldn't let her home and they'd have to rehabilitate her. She had to be able to get up four or five steps of stairs, but they'd send her home. And then again, she would fall, something would happen. Um, and I'm trying to think of what mum's weight was probably about, I want to say, what, maybe she was 180 kilo. It was a lot, you know? And there were so many things going on in her body, which I know the weight absolutely created, caused, but you couldn't say that either. But what I'm saying is, you know, if you're living with someone that suffers from obesity and they're not going to change, it can be a suicide mission. You know, if mum didn't get cancer, I I think the obesity would have sadly killed her, you know, or a heart attack or something. But I wish I had have just had a bit more acceptance. And this is how you choose to live. I can't change it. And that's okay. You know, all I can do is just love you. And I did, and I do, I love my mum so much. Leslie mum <laughs> I hope you like this video <laughs> yeah you know it's all you're left with is love all the beautiful memories and the good times and and if you can hold on to that now before that person you love passes you know I whether you're obese or not I think that goes for anyone and everyone but I just wish I could turn back the clock and and not have put so much energy into that part of her life but it was her life I don't know if this video is helpful. Again, it was just so last minute. I was just, I was, I always, when I shower, it's when all these things come to me or different things I want to talk about. And I wanted to talk about this. So I hope it's going to help somebody out there. Leave a comment, ask me a question, anything you want. You know I'm an open book. I'm not even going to ask you if you've enjoyed this video. I just hope you've been able to take something from this video. I make lots of other videos, so you can check it out on my YouTube channel.